Good day grade 10s, welcome to this next lesson in your revision week um, for your control test. In this lesson we're going to carry on with our algebraic expressions, this is the last part of the algebraic expressions, hooray! And in this lesson we're going to carry on with basically factorizing trinomials because trinomials make up a large part of your algebraic expressions and you'll need them later. The reason they make up such a large part is because you're going to need them later for graphs with parabolas etc and if you do science you're going to need them as well right so let's go through this okay the first one is factorize x squared minus 10x plus 25 and whenever you're factorizing you always look for common factors and there are no common factors yeah 10 and 25 both can be divided by 5 but unfortunately x squared is a coefficient of 1 so that doesn't help at all so right so let's factorize this so we obviously you're going to have two brackets and our number letters are going to be x and x and because the coefficient is 1 in front it will be 1x and 1x and this symbol here tells us that both the signs are going to be the same and they're both going to be a minus so it's minus and a minus and now we are looking at factors of 25 which when added together give us 10. So the factors are 25. 25 is pretty easy because it's just really 1 and 25 and 5 and 5 and 1 from 25 is 24 and 25 plus 1 is 26 so that's not going to work so let's look at 5 and it obviously has to be 5 and 5 so it's going to be x minus 5 and x minus 5 and that's it that is your first trinomial factorized. Let's look at the next one. Now we've got x squared minus 8x plus 16. Again, you look for a common factor and there are none. So we've got our two brackets. And it's the same format. Do you see it's minus plus minus plus? And we've got an x and an x. And this plus here tells us that both the signs in these brackets are going to be the same. And this minus tells us they're both going to be minus. And we want to factorize this so that the two factors when added up, these two factors when added up, give us an 8. So our factors are 16, are 16 and 1, 8 and 2, and 4 and 4. So they're both going to be the same. So 16 minus 1, and so in other words, it's going to be minus and minus. So 16 and 1 gives us. 17 or it gives us 15. 8 minus 2 gives us 6 and 8 plus 2 gives us 10. That doesn't work so neither does work. But 4 and 4 gives us 8. So there we go. So it's x minus 4 and x minus 4. So you can see that these were actually just perfect squares that we're factorizing. Now let's look at this one. So this one's a little bit more complicated because we've got a coefficient on the x squared. So we're going to have letters in front of our x's. We also have a y. Okay, so what that means is our brackets now look something like this. We now have an x and a y and an x and a y, but now we're going to have something in front of the x's as well. Now, again, this term tells us, the sign tells us that they're both pluses and both the same, and this tells us they're both pluses, so we can put a plus here and a plus here. Now, because we've got a coefficient in front of the x squared, the first term, we need to look at the factors of both this 9 and of the last. So, factors of 9 are 9 and 1 and 3 and 3. The factors of 4 are going to be 4 and 1, and you need to write it both ways because you could multiply it both ways, 1 and 4. And obviously 2 and 2, and you don't need to write that both ways because really it's the same thing. And now what you do, remember what we cross multiply, we cross multiply, but why? Because it's the first term times by the first term, the first term times by the second term, so we cross multiply. So 9 times 1 is 9, and 1 times 4 is 4, and 9 and 4 either give us 5 or 13, so that's not going to work. So we, right, so now let's move on. We've got 9 times 4 is 36, so that's out. 9 times 2 is 18, so really the 9 and 1 just doesn't work. So let's look at the 3 and the 3, and remember that we want this to add up to 12. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 4 is 12 already, so that's not going to work, so now we can cross it out. And the same thing for the 1 and 4. 
So what do we have? We've got 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6, and we add them up, it becomes 12. So yeah, that works. And remember how we do this? We then write them across. So it becomes 3x plus 2y, 3x plus 2y. Now grade tens this may seem complicated, but remember this is revision. So if you're really struggling with this, go back to the lessons on trinomials early in the year and go through those videos. We do do this much slower, step for step. But most importantly, the best way to get good at trinomials is to practice, 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 practice. Right, let's do some more. So now we've got x squared plus 7x plus 12. x squared plus 7x plus 12. So again, we've got our two brackets. And luckily the coefficient of this is 1, so it's just going to be an x and an x. This plus again tells us that both the signs are the same and they're both plus, so we've got plus and plus. So we just need to look at the factors of 12. What is going to give us a 7? So our factors of 12 are 12 and 1, 6 and 2 and 4 and 3. 12 plus 1 is 13 and 12 minus 1 is 11. That's not going to work. 6 plus 2 is 8. Remember they've got to be the same, so that doesn't work. Because 4 plus, 4 plus 3 gives us 7, so it is a 4 and a 3. How nice and easy is that? Right, 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Okay, so again, brackets. Okay, this time we've got an x squared here. And, but it's got a coefficient of 2. So we've got x squared and x squared. We know that this means the signs are different and one of the signs is going to be a plus and the other one's going to be a minus. So it's a plus and a minus and we want minus 9. So we have to do our factors of 2 and 1 and the factors of 5 are either going to be 5 and 1 or 1 and 5. So 2 times 1 is 2 and 1 times 5 is 5, so that gives us 7 or it gives us 3, so that doesn't work. But 2 times 5 is 10 and 1 times 1 is 1 and if we subtract those two from each other we get 9, so that works. But we want a minus 9, which means we want a minus 10. Now remember we're multiplying it crosswise, so it's 2 times minus 5 gives us minus 10 and then 1 times positive 1 gives us a plus 1. And then remember we always write it just from left to right. So it becomes 2, I don't know why that's x squared, sorry my bad, 2x plus 1 and then x minus 5 and there's your answers. Okay, let's look at this one. It's slightly more complicated because of this x squared at the bottom, which seems scary. But it's not really, because what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the whole of this by x squared to get rid of that denominator. So we're going to go x squared times by x squared, plus 13 times by x squared, plus 30 over x squared times by x squared. So what happens? You read that becomes x to the 4 plus 13x squared plus, and those cancel, becomes 30. Now all that's happened is we've still got a trinomial because the whole point is that you've got a middle term and that middle term is squared in the first term. Yeah, our middle term is x squared and x squared squared is x to the 4, so this is still a trinomial. Okay, so our coefficients of x squared are 1 and 1. Our coefficients of 30 are going to be 30 and 1, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and no, that, and then 5 and 6. Okay, and we want a difference of, or we want it to add up to 13, because if we look at it, we've got two brackets. It's x and x, and it's x squared, please note, x squared. This sign here tells us the plus sign and they're both the same, so it's plus and plus. And we want them to add up to 13. And you see that 30 plus 1 is 31, 2 plus 15 is 17, 5 plus 6 is 11, so it has to be 3 and 10. 
and we can't factorize this any further because although this is looks like it could be factorized it can't be because of the fact that these are both pluses and that's it grade 10 for this lesson please go practice your factorizing and all I can say to you is the more you practice your trinomials the better you'll become have a great day